All right, you're like, oh, there. All right. The th- and, and you notice the, 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 the thing stops and looks in your direction. Hmm. And I'll put down a, uh, a token. Let's make our way towards it. It's sort of on the way. There's safety in numbers. Um, yes. The tokens. I created the token. We want to call this a uh, stick gathering humanoid. Is the token going to be what I think it's going to be? <laughs> No. No, it is not. <laughs> Ooh, she is. Time has been none too kind to her face. She oddly, like, cocks her head up towards all of you, is looking in your general direction. Mm, odd, very odd movements. Hmm. You realize that one of the you realize that one of the sticks she's got is really too curved, uh, like it's got too much of a nice polished curve. It might be like an animal horn, oh. like some really big animal horn that she was kind of like scratching at the center of of the uh, of of the um, the crossroads, if you will. Perhaps she's dowsing. Uh, perhaps she found what she was looking for. <laughs> she's hiding behind a rock. If she was looking for a big horn, I think she found it. So Pharaoh's just like an elephant, like an elephant takes some sand with his it tusk, take some time throws to get it there. around. Yep. We may as well, we may as well move in that direction though, since we've okay. announced our presence. You start picking your way down into the valley. She just simply waits. Um, she does pull up uh, her kind of her hood a little bit, and she she's waiting. She's now leaning on the. It's not quite a. It's probably a rothe horn, like half yeah. a rothe horn that she's using as a stick. Okay. Uh, the bundle of sticks does look more like a bundle of bones mixed with sticks. Now that you're getting a little bit closer, she is. She's big. She's about as tall as a pharos is. Um, um, uh, as we get closer... Troll-like in features, she seems to be more listening to approach, as her eyes look like they're completely milky white, and she might be blind. I am not interested yeah. in crossing I'll, back. I'll whisper that this this blind old woman looks, looks like she might know about covens. Do you fancy conversing with her for a second? Yes, I think she's she's somewhat one of my kind. Maybe um, you want to go a I little bit. I actually don't know ahead. if hags are fey. Probably not. Mm, knowledge of nature would probably tell you that. I am curious. I am hesitant. I am not interested in getting into a fight so close to my destination. I'm hoping that it will ah, not be required. Fourteen. Fourteen hags are monstrous humanoids. Okay. Uh, what did you roll with? Knowledge? Nature. Uh, I can auto aid on knowledge nature. This mm, particular you hag roll it yourself. Is, okay. You got a 19? Just I got a 14. 14? Yeah, you know her type. She is a hag and, uh, and a monstrous humanoid. 30? 30. This is called oh. an anise hag. Uh, a repulsive hunchback crone, the with skin the color of fresh bruises. She looms much taller than a human. You know that anise hags can easily mix in with the covens of any other hag. Uh, they tend to be larger than their sisters. They have the ability to change shape, um, like into other humanoids. For some reason, she's just not being devious at this point in time. Uh, her real power would be that from her coven. 30 and a natural resistance to magic. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Her skin is thick and rubbery and you probably don't... Um, uh, 
somewhat resistant to um, DR. Okay. So you probably want to use bludgeoning weapons, strangely enough. Yes. To break her brittle bones as opposed to hack at her tough flesh. Zephyros just taps his scythe twice against the ground, says uh, to uh, Ferris, Perhaps you want to go a little bit ahead if you want to have a conversation. Hmm. I can hear you! Oh! Hello there! I'll say waving again. Pleasant day for a walk, isn't it? I'll fly a little bit ahead then. Okay. And she sniffs. Start like a she kind of snorts and here. sniffs, and it, it's like she's sniffing the air. She's all, She also hears you flying in. You can tell that she's following the sound of your wings. I'm Ferrisay, <laughs> Autumn. Autumn! Yes. A witch of the season. You're a little early. Oh, Autumn is always coming. Or has just come. It's not winter yet here, so it must be autumn approaching. And here I am. Simple thing to follow seasons. Yes. I suppose so. She grins blackened teeth like she doesn't take care of them. Hmm. I hear that there are those in this valley that, uh, that can see quite well. I smell fey. Is that why you're going to mince your words and be mm, amusing? Let's say yes. I like to sing too and play the pipes. Would you like to hear? I'm not one for music, however one of my sisters likes music. Mm. Perhaps you'd like to come and visit. The Hag's Cave. She points She points in a direction she seems to know where she is, and she points in this general direction. You don't know whether she's pointing at that rock or these rocks in behind, but somewhere in that direction. When she says Hag's Cave, uh, the professor will nudge Zephyrus in under his breath, say, A bit on the nose with that one. We could have probably used a better name there. <laughs> Many of my sisters and our predecessors have lived there for a long time. It is an ancient place, this valley. Oh, yes. You can feel the power a coursing through the land. A more precise name would be Seer's Rock. Yes, I suppose that would be a good name for it, wouldn't it? But I think that you humans... The name Hag's Cave would be sufficient. Things have more than one name, you know. Some names are forgotten. Some names are merely a reflection, she says. Uh, the, the, the big um, horn that she has does have runes along the sides of it, like it might... Mm. Be a, a staff club or, or a sword. staff or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor Browning his head from his fall earlier was saying, It's too hot for riddles. I wish she'd speak plainly. They'll say to Zephyrus in his little sidebar conversation. Yep. Is there a reason why you're here, dear? Or has fate simply forced you to this place? It is not one for idle walks unless you know what you're doing. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Fate has driven me here, as it drives us all. Fate and the Archfey, pushing us all around. Archfey? Are you one of her creatures? She eyes you with a bit of suspicion, or she makes a face of suspicion. She's not looking directly at you because you've landed. She's she's actually looking above you. Probably she thinks that you're taller than than you Fair actually enough. are. She she can't see. 
Yeah. She she's able to perceive, she's got good hearing. Yeah. Uh she's sniffed quite a few times. She guessed that you were Faye. We must all proceed with caution, I think. Are you one of her creatures? Are you not one of her creatures? Oh. One of my sisters really likes games. I prefer long walks in the valley. It is a long valley. Yes. You You should come come to the hag's cave. Or see as rock if you are not brave enough to walk inside. She says over your head to uh, uh, to the general vicinity of the professor. Oh, look behind me. Perhaps my sisters would enjoy your music. Perhaps my sisters would enjoy hearing what you know of the arch fay. Perhaps. This valley is more hospitable than the station itself. We've already got a dinner and v- invite Zephyros. <laughs> Can you believe it? Zephyros, that is a fant name, is it not? It is indeed. Seems she can hear herself. So, are you listening? Hello? I'll say, walking up. Yeah. Ca- careful or she'll invite you for dinner. Oh, well, <laughs> wouldn't be the first time today, actually, someone's threatened to eat me. It's kind of a common thing, I would say. Interesting. But, yes, of course, you'll eat me. I should be terrified, but I'm old. You'll hardly get any meat off my bones. Not worth your time. Well, we've done it. Nice to meet you. You should continue on. Who oh, is this obnoxious flea? No, oh, obnoxious flea? No, Mr. Gagat is not a flea. He's a thrikery. But I can see how you'd be confused. <sighs> Perhaps we should describe our weapons as well. No. Oh. Yes, well, I mostly don't like weapons. I'll start to... Green don't smell very well. I cannot smell him very well. Is he a real green or a pretender? No, oh, well, that's a rather personal question. I don't, don't know. Um... I am green. Interesting. Not many of your kind left. Not many. Yeah. Not since the Great Extermination. Ooh. Well, that's a good bit impolite to bring up, but... It is Especially in front of company, I would say. Yes. Many were slaughtered during the Great Extermination. Yes, quite a tragic thing. Exterminations? Lots of uh, unhappy folk. Uh, more like kill or be killed. I'm sorry, madam. I, I don't believe we were properly introduced. Oh. My name, you see, uh, Professor Henry Sinclair Chalmers III, uh, at your service. Uh, and, and you, madam? I don't believe I've ever had a professor at my service. No, well... Accepted. Yes, well... That's very, uh, kind of you. I see that you are quite adept at social interactions. Have you a name, my dear? And a patron? I was kind enough to share. Oh, several names. What should I call you? Uh, these names suck. (laughs) <laughs> Fair enough. Craven Roxana. Hmm, lovely name. Thank you, she says, and she kind of fixes her ugly hair uh, when you you say that. I'll take out my pipes and play a little ditty. 
She, she. Have you lived here long? Do you enjoy the weather? She doesn't seem to be liking the additional sound as it looks like she's trying to track where all of you are with her, with her hearing. I'll start tapping along. <laughs> this one? I do not like music, is what she says. Oh, oh sorry, madam. Seems she's got a bit of a musical soul. Can't really hold it back most of the time. Surely you understand. She's One's the fear takes a couple of steps to the side and he's swinging his... He's just playing, you know, if you rotate something in your arm, just making a little extra noise with whistling. The yeah, she seems Perfect. to be uh, agitated by this. Uh, the longer you uh, continue... Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll end after one verse. Okay. Ezri snuck off to the side by some rocks. Uh, she... <sighs> Please stop. This place, one needs to hear. Oh. There's a lot of you aren't there. Fair enough. More than you think. Let us be on our way then. Yes, she she sticks her nose into the air, and now that you guys are being coy, she's going to take a moment to. Unless you want really to trade. Deeply. What do you want to trade, dear? What do you have? Ooh. A few minor magical items. Uh, yes. For small people. Under the rock of the seer. And we will trade with you. If you're brave enough. She she looks in Professor's direction. She's kind of mocking that you are. are there, madam. Are there other fae in the valley? Mm. There's some here and there. There's or some. Stare at. It's not very kind to the fae. The heat and the little wind. I do appreciate the dinner invite, madam. I meant no offense. It does sound quite homely. I'm, I'm sure you've made quite a nice run of the place. Oh, you could come and meet my sisters. Yes. They would very much like to smell you. Oh, those two words. Olfactory senses? Yes. Yeah. Well, that is uh, quite a... Uh... We're very old. We don't see as good as we used to. Oh, uh, that uh, sounds quite inconvenient out here. Must have been difficult to adapt, I'd say. But surely... I don't know to say. <laughs> <That's an attack. laughs> <laughs> Surely a powerful hag such as you said. <laughs> that was what I was listening to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be fun. Okay. Manage to cope using uh, your extrasensory perceptions and whatnot. All the same, it's we don't need to draw too much attention to ourselves. Stay on the paths, then. Oh. Sound advice. Hindi mm. Wishka. It was that fate guide. Ah, as always, madam. It's a pleasure meeting your acquaintances and talking to you. Perhaps we'll take you up on that offer for a tea later. Perhaps. Yes, one of my sisters makes the most excellent tea. Yes, I'm sure not poisoned or cursed or anything. Just really good. Breakfast gray. Yes. Real good. <laughs> Breakfast gray. Yes, well. We shan't keep you any longer, seems you sticks to collect for. Oh no. It was a pleasure. Good thing I was out here today to do my walk. Yes. Must yes. be active. What business do you have here in the valley? We don't have any visitors out here. And so few fans. Yeah, I think perhaps our businesses are. Yes, this and that. Tis a lovely place, often heard of, storied with its rich antiquities. I am a professor after all. Ah, a plunderer. Surely you jest, madam. I am a man of academia. 
<laughs> Archaeology is just a fancy word for theft. I've often heard it's a fancy word for garbage collector, but theft. everyone has an opinion, I suppose. Fair enough. The rules of the fuck. Yes. One man's junk and another man's treasures. I thought it was one Vox Vox is another Vox Vox. Yes, well not all of us speak Vox. Vox, your pardon? <laughs> Fuck you. Ha <laughs> ha good shoe. <laughs> she wanders over to her sticks and is smiling to herself and heaves the big pack of bones and sticks and uh, uh, horn over her, over her, uh, <laughs> her back and then you may follow if you're brave enough. Otherwise, farewell. Ah, thank you. Ta -ta! I'll say it. Waving to her, though she's obviously blind. Yep, she kind of sniffs at something and then well, seems to just be tootling off following this trail. If she doesn't curse us, me, uh, eat us, or murder us in our sleep, I think I'm beginning to like her, but. <laughs> Probably hags do seem to find it hard to resist murdering and eating people, I think. Shane. Oh, especially witches. Witches have a very hard time resisting Professor. Oh. <laughs> but Professor, this hag Somehow like we you. manage. <laughs> this hag seems to like you, Professor. Yeah, she, she seemed friendly, says Ezra. She friendly. has very good hearing. She's friendlier than most people we meet, I must say. Oh, she cursed us only a few times, I think, only threatened to eat me once. Uh, of course, and, she's, and she's walking away. Yes. She, Usually that does not happen. She's oh for one on attempting to murder us, so I'm, I'm calling this one a win. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's wandering off. She seems to be uh, uh, not lollygagging anymore. She's she's definitely moving at a steady pace away. I'll go up and inspect what she was doing at the dirt. Okay, uh, you get to the crossroads and uh, similar feeling to you jumping off of a cliff. Uh, there is a, a brief moment of vertigo like you were falling as you approach the center of the crossroads. I'll detect magic on it. Okay, uh, with your magic Glowing runes poking out of the ground in a circle from the crossroads. Oh, delightful. Mm. Maybe stay out of that. Give me a... Uh, they're kind of in a circular pattern. I'm also going to do the deck magic, just so we be sure. Spellcraft? Uh, okay. Yep. Oh, you want spellcraft? Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw one down and... Anybody want to aid or just do your own? Oh, I've, got a plus, I've got a plus six spellcraft. I'll auto aid your spellcraft and Pixel will take a look as well. Who's uh, rolling? Uh, I got 17. I, if you want to aid or if you I'll want to. I'll aid you. I'll aid you. Pixel fails to aid but doesn't hurt. So I'll aid you as well. 33? Okay. There seems to be a um, two things that you learn from this with a 33. First, there is an incomplete uh, circle. It is called a magic circle against law. It is a abjuration subtype chaos um, spell. Mm -hmm. The circle was already etched there before and had a minor bit of magic still in it. And it looked like she's in the middle of repainting magic over the old rune markings mm -hmm. to enable the circle again. And it is... It is incomplete. What, what is... it's against law? Against law. Do I know what that means? It's pretty big. It sounds like it... It makes would, this place lawless? It would protect you from lawful creatures. Is that any of us? Are we lawful? You're a thief. I'm not a thief. 
<laughs> yes, you're I'm an archaeologist. <laughs> Up here. You are <laughs> not, but you are not. I get five <laughs> yeah. from my main man, Hickey yeah. Mesa. Yeah. Yeah. There's sort go. of like a, a rake from the uh, from Yeah, Hickey Mesa will totally have five on that. Stop encouraging her. How did you get out of this bag? <laughs> well, I don't suppose this would be a problem for us then. No, not really. In fact, it might be of some use if it were completed. Yeah. Uh, However, the, the etching looks really old, like it's been carved yeah. into like the bedrock that has been slightly, uh, slightly exposed at the um, um, because of the desert winds, and it looks like she's she was slowly like filling in magic or reactivating magic along some of the uh, uh, on some of the runes. Let me ask, which direction walk? is this is this circle pointed, inward uh, or outward? It would protect people on the outside from something within. Excellent. Uh, that's with your 33. Yeah. Okay, so we're not going in. Uh, no. Uh, uh, this, this then would be for another purpose, don't you think? Yes, I would agree. For bringing think, something here. Yes, I don't think this is anything to do with our purpose. Sounds like uh, we're moving on then. Yes. From this vantage point, you do see that there is a, um, a slight trail that leads up towards uh, these two buttresses of stone. And along the front faces of the buttresses of stone, kind of like um, uh, tall, um, um, tall glyphs with a, um, uh, with a perimeter in stone, sort of like Egyptian style. Mm -hmm. You see these two, uh, these two multi-tusked, multi-trunked, um, sideways figures of elephant people, mm -hmm. kind of in ancient Onkwani garb or ancient Egyptian garb, mm -hmm. kind of flanking the sides of, of the entryway uh, to this to this high-walled valley. And then there are statues of very uh, of uh, carved from the rock of. Uh, Fant. There are six of them. Uh, they're in various states of, of disrepair or uh, exposure to the elements. Like some of them have their tusks kind of like like kind of worn away uh, or their trunks worn away. But there are six carved, massive um, uh, relief statues along the sides, and there is a uh, there is a pathway that leads into stone into a kind of like two stone walls that get very very um, close together at the end, and then there's a simple uh, post and lintel doorway, kind of like, like almost like monolithic um, uh, opening, like it's just a flat stone on top of, a, of two um, sideways stones uh, that leads into an open cave. Into darkness. Into darkness. Does, do I get the sense that it is safe for us to enter? Yeah. Uh, this is a holy place where your people have been buried. Seems to be the place. I suppose you should probably leave from here on out, uh, Zephyrus. Yes, that's probably not a bad idea. There is a gravity to the place. I don't know if there's a safety to the place. But I don't sense danger, because this is a dangerous area and it's an odd location for this to be. So it has to be protected somehow, I'm assuming. Okay. So Pharaoh pauses for a moment, he breathes in and out, he makes some, uh, some thoughts that reassure him about his own safety. We could send in a servant first, it will set off any traps that require pressure. That sounds fine. Uh, I'll cast Heroism on Zephyros. Give you a bit of an uh, unseen honor guard here. I'll summon an unseen servant. And he'll walk in front, and as we go, I'll have him oh. press on the ground and press on things. This is a special place, isn't it? It's a locker room. Yes, it is. Well, I'm not sure how special just yet. Do you want me to stay on your back, or do you want me to wait 
wait out here. You can stay on my right back. Okay. Yeah. Makarnam turns into a backpack and... So the Unseen Servant is just going to walk in front of Zephyrus? Yeah, and he'll... I'll have him be pressing on the ground, trying to trigger traps. Okay. So the Unseen Servant kind of moving ahead. Uh, the pathway is definitely after about 10 feet into the flanking uh, Thant statues that loom above you is definitely paved. Um, great big interlocking uh, uh, sandstone blocks have been uh, that kind of paved the way. There, is, there are scrub plants that are growing out of the uh, uh, out of the gaps in the big blocks. There's a bit of desert dust that is piled up here and there. Uh, Tex says many big creatures have made this path, but none have been here recently. Yes. Good to know. So as we walk in between statues, Zephyrus is just mindful and just keeps an eye taking a look, trying to see if he can see any carvings or any instructions or any anything that would give him sort of a hint as to what to avoid, what to do, other than the obvious things that he knows that he has to do in such a yep. holy or sacred place. There are definitely carvings, although the carvings uh, are a little less language and more like series of glyphs or pictures. Uh, do any of you speak or read High Ankwani? Uh, I think I do. No, I do low on Pony, I'm sorry. No, I've high. got high on Pony. Okay, well, you can read the hieroglyphs. I'll read them out loud as we go along and make my normal professor comments about things. Okay, they, they do have a lot of writing here, and it basically, um, uh, uh, there is a Unkwani hieroglyphic. Ward away, uh, warding away evil spirits and evil intent. Yeah, your typical warding against evil, evil intent sort of thing you want against grave robbers, I would say. <coughs> <coughs> there is <What> a <laughs> proclamation that this is uh, holy ground to the inherited race, and there's definitely an insinuation that it means fant. Although it's not exclusive to Fant. Holy ground, inherited races, bit of uh, implied Fant racism, it feels like. Uh, oh, pretty normal stuff. Uh, oh, this one is particularly and then the And then the third set is... Um, this is the Ossuary Vault that holds the bones of entire peoples. Um, there shall be curses to those of ancient design who defile this place. Ah, here we are, just the place. Uh, we'll recite that. Ah, the ossuary, nice bit about curses, always exciting when taking down an expedition. Yeah. May the principles of Mayat um, hold true. Principles of Mayat, is that familiar to anyone? Is that familiar to Zephyrus? Mm, knowledge religion? I'll aid him. Uh, I can auto aid you. Zephyrus. I'm going to make my own knowledge religion roll on this. I'm pretty low on knowledge religion, I'm plus 11, so it might be best if we all roll. Uh, I'll still auto aid I'm actually going to take 10 on the knowledge religion check with my bardic knowledge for a 25. 25? Yeah, you beat me. It's an Ankwani concept of truth, balance, order, harmony, law, morality, and justice. Did truth, you get order, law, two? harmony, knowledge, law, order, and justice. Truth, harmony, knowledge, order, and justice. It's a, it's a guiding ethical... Every time we say something, we leave one more off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, it's a, probably truth, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a guiding ethical principle. Um, what, is, what is it called? Mayat. M A apostrophe A T. The Mayat principles. Mm -hmm. So, what were they? Uh, 
would, would one of the one of the things you might believe if you believe this would be that you should not take things from a tomb yes, yes. that is protected by by ancient curses in, in so, the, in so, the, so no archaeology in the Ankwani uh, oh. in the Ankwani <laughs> underworld it is believed that the hearts of the dead were weighed against the single feather of Mayat ah study them here but leave them with with the the place and it it was truth oh you want you want yeah the I'm portfolio down. again real quick truth uh truth balance order harmony law morality balance. and justice order harmony justice yeah then it may have well been an old Ankwani god, Mayat, uh, as opposed to a con uh, uh, There's quite a lot of them. <laughs> uh, a concept, but it's not a deity that anyone follows. Yeah. What it's saying here is the people who are interred here probably will be judged by the same principles of old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's quite a tall order to live up to. I think we should avoid being interred here ourselves for the moment. I'm going to try and avoid being interred at all. Thank you. Good luck, Professor. Okay. Winter comes for us all. That last warning the after autumn. Um, is written in the last two flanks of, of uh, the, the massive statues we're talking. The statues are, I don't know, 50 feet tall. Look at uh, the craftsmanship. Uh, they're not freestanding statues. They're, they're kind of uh, relief uh, carved, uh, weather worn. Beautiful. It's excellent work. Yes. As a carver myself, I'm reasonably impressed. The scale is most impressive. Yes. The only thing that remains is the uh, capital pie-shaped uh, doorway. Well, uh, it is standing out a little bit from the cave entrance. It's a flat stone on top of two two other stones. There are smaller runes uh, along the sides of them. These don't say anything. They're likely magical runes, and then just this pitch darkness, like your light. The light from outside should be going into the cave a little bit, and it is not. I'll detect magic on the doorway. All right, there is an abjuration of moderate power on the doorway. Give me a spellcraft. Uh, 17. Shall I aid or roll? Uh, the DC of this is... Uh, what are you like? Uh, 25. I'll aid. All right. 38. It is a mage's private sanctum, or a similar effect. The fact effectively means you can't use scrying spells to pierce this area. Oh, this is rather convenient. Yeah. You can't scry your way in here. Yes, I do. Okay. Shall we? That, that would be the case. Shall we go lay your master to rest once and for all? See if we can't pick up a curse or two? <laughs> Everything sounds good except the last bit that you said. You're an idiot, aren't you, Sissori? <laughs> what? I enjoy studying curses. Not on myself, of course. Aren't you the curse singer? Isn't that some uh, damn fool The curse singer? Yes. I believe. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. Um, you guys can hear the sounds of, like, really loud, almost... They've almost got, like, a screeching yell to them. Uh, you hear the sounds of those big bird things is what you're guessing. Hey. I think we should hurry up and get inside. Uh, they're just echoing. You're not too sure. They, they may have gotten closer and there may be more than one. From the inside or the outside? Uh, from the outside. Okay. Yes, let's go in. I think so. Well, as we enter, Zephyros just slightly yells, Hello? Is anybody in here? Are you... So you, you're saying that from outside? I think we step yeah. in. Or are you going to step in? As we step in, I say that. Okay. Um, the brief moment of passing through the darkness fades as there are um, some high up windows and perhaps uh, mirrors of polished bronze that are... Uh, Beaming light down into this big uh, into this big temple uh, this big Classic. temple area. Classic. There are um, carved buttresses of stone, kind of holding up uh, this vault that you've wandered into, with small doors leading in all directions. 
there is a figure that is standing um, kind of across the uh, across the hall from you. The figure has got its eyes closed. It's actually not standing. He's in the lotus position and floating. What race is he? Is it, he it, is, it is a gigantic white uh, a fant with all sorts of fabulous looking garb. I think we found the nice. uh, albino. What was his name? Something Bones? It's just albino. Ugh. Yeah. This is not that. Oh, yes. The albino seems right. to be bathed in the light, just strategically kind of beaming across him in the darkness, and you could see all sorts of writing and little alcoves, and uh, the albino is just simply hovering. Looks like he might even be snoozing. Ooh, that's clever. I suppose you should go up and introduce yourself. Just let me see one moment. Uh... Zephyr is clear as it's slow. Like... That does not seem to wake the albino. Hello. Zephyrus walks up to the albino a little bit, but he doesn't stand too close. Okay. I'll uh, Se some separating stuff. you along the ground. It looks like there is a um, uh, a semicircular pit that's perhaps used to light fires. You do see a bunch of old, like low burning coals in it. Uh, the pit's about 15 feet across, and he's kind of hovering um, uh, about five feet away from the pit on the opposite side of your approach. I'll, I'll does, it, does it look like other people light the pit? So does it look like this is a ceremonial pit of some kind? Yeah, it does look like um, the coals or fires could be built up in, into this area. So Zephyrus starts stacking some coals. I'll cast a glamour on myself so I'm less offensive. Okay. I think Mokronum's going to slide off me and go back to the crowd. Okay, Mokronum slides off you, turns into a vase, and two little feet off the vase, and tick, 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 <laughs> kind of wanders back uh, towards the others. Pixel's going to start poking around. Okay. She's not going to take anything or disturb anything. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of the things in this room there. are too big for her to disturb. They're just yeah. big, yeah. big statues, um, uh, lots of writing along the walls, and little dark doorways that lead to places unknown. Uh, for something called the Boneyard, there seems to be a distinct lack of bones <laughs> in this chamber. Although perhaps <laughs> they don't bury them just in the entry hall. Yeah. Um, oh, so look around, too. Where do they bury their bones, I wonder? It's like the age-old question, Matt. Age-old question. The albino begins to breathe deeply, <laughs> and smoke starts to come out of his trunk, Ooh. And it starts to come out of the trunks of the statues all along the hall. Ooh. In this place is this of... happening as I'm making the fire? Yeah, this is happening as you're poking at the fire. Okay. Um, and this place is filling up very rapidly full of mist. This looks promising. Is it Mr. Smoke? Um... It does have a smoky quality to it, but there's, there's, given that Zef uh, Ferris uses mist magic, it it's seems magical. Ah, uh, yes, it is magical. I think I think that means Ferris can see through it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, actually, if it were normal, she yeah. could just flat out see through it. Got it. If since it's magical, she could only see through like fifteen feet of it or something. Okay. Like that. Yep. Um, yeah. He is activating some sort of. You're guessing that this might be part of the magic of the place? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll concentrate on it for a little while and see if I can get a sense of uh, what types of magic are in there. Is this poisonous, for example? It is a smoky quality, but it is not poisonous. Okay. Um, you can't see the doors that lead around this place, and you can't see the way that you came out. Damn it, I was studying these sculptures. You are staying just where you are, Professor. Yes, oh well. So I continue. The blaze of the light still allows you to see him in the mist. Uh, he, 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 his eyes do, uh, his eyes do open. If you're standing near Zephyros, you can see across. The mist doesn't seem to be going over over the coals. I'll move in closer. I love mist. Yeah, I'll, I'll 
joints been observed. Why have you come here? A booming voice, uh, you assume, coming from the albino, uh, emanates in this chamber with a with a strength and echo. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Dusker Zephyrus Eustathios. I am here to bring the bones of my master. And I say my master's name. What is your master's name? I've forgotten what my master's name is, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm uh, sure Zephyrus knows. Uh, master uh, Telamon, it's on your turn. There we go. There we go. There you go. I was looking for it now. Yes, Master Telma. My master's name is Ma was Master Telma. He died recently, and it was his wish that these bones be sent here. Okay. Uh, the albino's legs move off of whatever he was hovering on. You can't quite tell. Uh, and they do hit the ground with two uh, with two loud thuds that echo throughout the chamber. His bones shall be interred here, like those of his kin and kind before you. Yes, I did. You, were you expecting his bones? Yes. So Ferris takes out the bones and. Holds it up. Yep. Um, you feel a draft and some some force or uh, entity is now grabbing the bag of bones. I will cast see invisibility on myself. Okay. You do see that there are unseen servants, although the unseen servants that are helping out the albino are large. Okay. Delightful. Or they could be spirits of sorts, but they are grabbing the bag, um, and... They're kind of floating the bag and its contents back towards the albino. Telemon. <clears throat> shall be interred, his bone shall be interred with those who came before. To be remembered for all of time remaining. You will be honored. I will be honored. Zephyros, shall we prepare a place for your bones when the time comes? Yes, I would greatly appreciate it. He, the, the albino nods slowly. Will my bones be near my masters? Yeah. So I shall find somebody to do for me what I have done for my master. To bring my bones here. Once it has been separated from flesh. Okay, the albino accepts your answer and sort of breathes in like he's breathing in the smoke. There are other reasons why you are here. Young ones always have questions. Ooh, the good part. I shall tell of three things. Oh, damn it. I hate it when they put that uh, stipulation. You may contemplate for as long as you wish. Does Sephiroth have any particular questions that he thinks would need answering? That's a good question. Um, hmm. Well, one of them, uh, you weren't here for this, but Dombro suggested that you bring the staff that your master left for you okay. uh, to the albino. Okay. I remember this was something you were supposed to give over with your bones of your master, but you didn't, but then you ended up traveling with the bones anyways with the staff. Okay. So Zephyrus 
you, you you know in general that the albino is truly old and um, you think he's quite powerful uh, and therefore might know quite a bit about the world. Your companions may also have questions. <laughs> he seems to, it, for whatever reason, only be willing to answer three. He's heard about us. You got some questions. I'll be here all fucking day otherwise. <laughs> If you're looking for ideas, Zephyros. Does Zephyros know why there was the expectation that he would hand the staff over to the albino? You don't. So before Zephyros... Now, you, asked, what, you, what you know about the staff is that it was the start of a staff... Uh, do you remember me telling you what this was, or am I remembering? I don't remember. I, okay. I remember. It, it, was, it was the start of a staff of fire. It's an incomplete staff. So Zephyra says to the albino, I have my master's staff with me that I was told to bring to you. It is the started staff of fire, but it is incomplete. Yes. Uh he, he does flip forward and he reaches his hand out. Zephyrus pauses for a moment, but then puts the staff in his hand. Okay. Um, the staff kind of moves from his hand to, his, to the albino's trunk and then to his other hand as he's looking at it. Your master was not able to complete this staff. No, he was not. I assume you are a wizard. I am. This staff is no ordinary staff of fire. This staff is intended for an evoker. Yes, this I am. Staff is intended to be an implement of destruction. Why should I help you complete it? I suppose it is not for a wise wizard like you to listen to me. But if I may offer a suggestion, the world is in dire need of destruction, and sometimes destruction can be used for good purposes, which is what I'm doing. I am helping the world, going to various locations and sorting out issues that are left, either by evil people taking over or wanting to take over. I have already dispatched an entire gang in the slurry pipes doing something similar. And we nearly died in the process. Had it not been for some destructive power, we would have been useless. I'll have you know they had a tusker helping them. It pained me greatly to have to take it down. Okay, uh, I'll lean over to Tech. Well, that's a solid answer. So mm. here looks at it. Which enemy do you fight, Tusker? Uh, do I remember the other Tusker's name that we uh, fought at the Slurry Pipe? He was actually a rogue. Oh, but, but he was a fan, right? He was a yeah. fan. He was not of your kind. He was a rogue fan. Oh, he was a rogue fan. Okay, sorry. In that he was not, he was Trogax. He was not, he was not a, uh, uh, an honorable enough to have become a Tusker. He was right. just out for himself. Right. His name was Trogax. He was not a Tusker, but he wanted to be one. He was not honorable. But he was a formidable foe. And who is your enemy now that Trogax has been vanquished? 
I do not maintain a list of named enemies. Instead, I go from place to place and I do what is required. I'll sadly yeah. take out the Harrow deck and start shuffling, trying to see if Zolara is willing to make an appearance or if her anger keeps her in. <clears throat> okay. Um... And there is another guy who escaped. I forget just what his name was. Uh, the there was a oh, their evil wizard. Yeah. Yeah, I just forget what his name was. Zalara, you get a sense of awe from the cards. Like this emotion is much more um, temporarily prevalent than her ang than her anger and desire for revenge. I'll feel that, and I'll step up. Put aside Zephyros, and I say, Gentlemen, allow me. You ask this question of my friend and companion and colleague. Perhaps this will help give you an idea. And I'll begin a reading on the ground and coax Zolara to use her major image to appear as whatever she wants. Okay. Um, Zolara. The previous boons from your last Harrow reading have now disappeared. Can as, I? As you begin a new Harrow reading. Yeah, can I do? I think it's prognostication. I can use the Harrow deck as a tool? Or was it. Sorry, no, it's. Uh. What is the job being called in D&D? &D? Profession. Uh, fortune teller? Those previous boons weren't the stat bonuses, right? Those were... Nope. Yeah. Okay. The, these were the temporary once, once, a, once a time thing. Some of you have used them, some of you have not. Yeah, I think mine faded before I could use it. It's been a while getting season going, boys! Getting the cards out! Woo! The albino stops and looks, and Zolara does appear uh, like she's dealing the cards um, instead of uh, instead of the professor. The albino's eyes go wide for a moment, but then simply watches. Uh, there's a bit of suspicion and perhaps consternation. <laughs> this may be real sacrilegious fun in the face of all he believes. Uh, hopefully the glamour spell eases over some of those. <laughs> Zalara does does nod to the fant, like she acknowledges where she is. Show us. You guys have the uh, the suits of the um, of the stat boosts that you guys have. Haven't they all faded? No, the stat boosts. The stat, boot, the stat boosts have not. Oh. But there should be suits. Uh, uh, oh yes, Zolara. Attributed to that. Zolara's pact. Mm -hmm. I had no, but was was the Zolara's pact from the arrow deck? Yep. It okay, was. so I. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I'm struggling to hear you guys a little bit of background talking. Yeah, it's just yeah. chatty. I don't know what my suit was. Mine's the int one. I think we wrote them down. Mine was an int one as well. A lot of us picked in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a bunch of smarty bences. I think we probably put them down on the one note, to be honest. Yep, Solaris Harrow deck int was the book uh, suit. That, that makes sense. sense. All right. Um, the Harrow deck is um, a fickle thing. Uh, as you guys are probably looking for book suit for something really good, yeah. um, uh, there is possibility that you guys can get uh, things that are antithesis to. Sure. <laughs> and that would be totally fair and fitting for us. To there are a bunch of cards that go out in the reading, but the most important card and the card that we're going to base this off of is the center card out of nine, and we're just going to draw once. Okay. Um, uh, Zolara is simply waiting for you to uh, draw the cards. Uh, the the albino has moved closer, like he's really interested in what's going on. Perhaps this surprised him. 
It's a good one. Okay. A few tricks up our sleeves. Yeah. All right. Pick a card, any card. <laughs> Zamora, be with me. Here you go. Okay, the card that- It's a book. The card that flaps down looks like a